Ebenezer Scrooge has a marketing crisis on his hands, and not even the ghost of Christmas past, present, or yet to come can help him get out of it. So sit back, pour some nog, and enjoy this tale of marketing woe, brought to you by Mr. Humbug himself, Ebenezer Scrooge. Humbug. Let's set the scene real quick, so you know how this dilemma came to be. Spoiler alert, it's all Scrooge's fault. As a kid sometime in the late 1700s, Scrooge gets sent to boarding school and never goes home to celebrate Christmas with his family. Who cares about stupid old Christmas? He grows up, falls in love with Belle, and destroys their wonderful relationship by only focusing on finances. The investments haven't grown as they should. So you said last year. The business continues to be poor. So, after an unloved childhood and greedy early adulthood, Scrooge becomes bitter and withdrawn and shuts himself off from the world. Now a partner at Scrooge and Marley, he grows wealthy as a landlord, moneylender kind of guy. But he's awful to his employees, his customers, even his own nephew. He's just a real meanie. He charges folks a fortune for his dark and drafty houses as poor folk live in misery. It's even worse for mouses. Then we all know what happened next. One Christmas Eve, three ghosts visit him and show Scrooge visions of his past, present, and future, and how his life will be if he continues on his current uncaring path. The ghosts manage to convince Scrooge to change his ways. The spirits did it all in one night. They can do anything they like. He is so moved by the experience that the next morning he becomes a kind and generous person. And that is where we get to his marketing crisis. After decades of being Mr. Skinflint, Mr. Greed, the undisputed master of the underhanded deed, suddenly now, overnight, Scrooge is generous and helps others. Does he actually expect the good people of London to believe this complete personality reversal? He's been bilking his customers for years, overcharging them, showing no mercy. He might have a lot of money, but he's tapped out on trust. So his problem is convincing all of London that he's a changed man and that his financial institution is now open for business with a thankful heart and improved customer service. Luckily, there's a way Scrooge can solve his problem. He can issue a public apology. Public apologies from corporations are a tale as old as time. Tale as old as time. Not now, Mrs. Potts. There's actually an entire database of documented apologies at publicapologycentral.com, if you want to take a look. But even though they happen often, there is a right way and a wrong way to issue a corporate apology. If you craft it correctly, your company gets a significant upside. According to the digital marketing training company, CXL, apologizing to disappointed customers can increase brand reputation, retain loyal clients, and increase recurring revenue. All great things, and I would say even the newly generous Scrooge would want those benefits for his business. If Scrooge can acknowledge his poor customer service in the past, show genuine remorse, and provide a resolution to customers old and new, that can go a long way in establishing Scrooge and Marley's improved brand reputation. According to CXL, this is how you do a business apology in six steps. Number one, apologize even if it's not your fault. Well, it was Scrooge's fault. He was the reason for the toxic customer service experience. If they'd rather die, then they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. He needs to own his mistakes and recognize how much harm he caused. Number two, apologize publicly. How can Scrooge do that in 1843 London? By paying for a full page ad in every newspaper. He's got the money for it. And by publishing in every newspaper, he's getting exposure with the different social classes from the different papers. Some papers cater to aristocrats with means that could grow his business. Other papers are more working class, and that seems to be more his bread and butter customer. And of course, people talk, so that one published apology would have a long shelf life in London social circles. Number three, respond in a timely fashion. This is gonna be a tough one. Not sure how timely Scrooge's apology will be. He's been pretty awful for a very long time. One company that did apologize punctually was KFC, and they did it in the UK too. In 2018, they ran out of chicken at many of their stores. 
Within days, they had published an apology spelling FCK on their iconic bucket and owning up to their mistake. Pretty provocative, right? Had they waited weeks or months to apologize, it wouldn't have had the same effect. Number four, explain what went wrong. Scrooge just needs to lay it all out there. Say why his atrocious customer service decisions happened without making excuses. He shouldn't blame his loveless childhood or that he's still heartbroken over Belle dumping him. What went wrong is he treated customers poorly by his demeanor and predatory business practices. Ideally, Scrooge avoids using the words if and but. A public statement with those words comes across a lot more like an excuse than an apology. Number five, offer an incentive. This is the chance for Scrooge to demonstrate how generous he really has become. He could, for example, give all his tenants a free month of rent to make amends. He also could lower his interest rates for new and existing loan customers. An apology is nice, but offering a tangible takeaway for people in addition to that apology will put Scrooge and Marley in a positive light more quickly. One company that did this incredibly well was Johnson & Johnson. In 1982, some of their Tylenol pills were laced with cyanide and killed seven people. Aside from issuing an apology, they recalled 31 million bottles and offered free replacements, which was valued at $100 million. Because of how they handled the crisis, the company regained 70% of their market share within five months, and a year after, they were at 90%. And finally, number six, remember, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. In the end, an apology always comes down to sincerity. How many times have you read some overly edited corporate apology where it's clear lawyers rewrote it to prevent any litigious fallout? Scrooge just needs to speak from the heart. If he does, that earnest tone will come across in his apology and resonate with the people of London. They may be wary at first, given that he's Scrooge, but his sincerity could win them over in the end. If this public apology works out for our old friend Ebenezer, his existing customers will be made whole, he'll secure new clients, and maybe his long-lost Belle will hear of his change of heart and they'll rekindle their love once again. It could happen. Who knows? It's Victorian England. I don't know how dating worked back then. She could still be single. <laughs>